Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a risk assessment chart. And basically what a risk assessment chart is, is a tool that helps you decide on which risk you should prioritize. So stick around and we'll see how this gets done. So here we have our risk assessment chart here. We've got our probability on the y-axis, our impact on the x-axis. So here what you're trying to do is you're looking at the impact of your risk here on the x-axis, here with my column B here, and your y-axis, your probability of that risk happening, and trying to see where it fits in in the continuum of risk. You can see here we've got green for our low, low impact, low impact, low probability, all the way up to our high, high impact, high probability. Let's get into how this chart is created and closer to the end of the video, I'll show you different ways that we can embed this chart into something like PowerPoint. So let's see how we can do this. Take this, I'm just going to take this data here, Control C to copy, open up a new worksheet. Now the worksheet here, Control V to paste. I'm going to make this a little bit, auto fit this, double, double click that to auto fit and click outside of the table here because I want to insert a chart. If I insert the chart with that selected, it's going to insert that data already in there. I like to kind of start fresh, add a scatter chart, make this a little bit bigger here, and start to add in the data. So under the design ta tab here, under select data, select add, series name, that's going to be cell A1 here, and it'll become the title, even though it's a series name here for the series X values, that's going to be the impact. The impact is going to be the X values here. That would be cell B2 to B12. And for my Y values, delete this, that will be cell C2 to C12. Click OK, click OK, and now you have my scatter chart that's kind of laid out here. I'm going to make this plot area a little bit smaller. Pull that in a little bit here, and from this bottom here, pull this up a little bit right and add access titles so go under the plus sign here access titles we're gonna have my access titles here so you can type it in like I can say this is impact but it's probably better to reference the cell here so if I change this to impacts you can see that it didn't change there I'm gonna double click this auto fit there that s is not there let's change it back all right but if I reference this, as I, if I took a reference here, instead of having impact there, type equal then B1, press enter, and if I press, if I change the title, S, you can see now it's changed here. So it's kind of a good idea to have the axis title reference something if possible. I'll do the same thing for the Y axis title, type equal, and then probability, press enter, and then I've got my titles there remove the grid lines. I don't need the grid lines here. So the vertical grid lines are selected, press delete. Horizontal grid lines here, select it, press delete. And now I want to have labels here. Select on any of my elements here, right click and go under add data labels. We want to add data labels here. And you notice that it adds a default Y axis data labels, one and two and three and two. You can, you can notice these are the Y axis labels. I don't want that. I want the text here. So I need to click on my data labels again and right click format data labels. Here I want to select values from cells and I'm going to, it's going to ask me to select my data label range, which is going to be cell A2 to A12. Click OK and we have our labels here that are the text. I don't need the Y ones anymore, the Y values, uncheck that box, but I do want to keep the show leader lines and the reason why is because when I click outside, you can see some of it has been overlaid on each on top of each other. So if I move some of them out, let me select it again, just select that one. If I move that out, the leader lines will show up. If I move this one out, I think there's three on top of here. So I have my lines showing up that kind of point back to that data point. Let's do the same thing for these down here. So I have my leader lines, so it gives it a better visualization of where it's supposed to be. So Let's select those and move them out a little bit so I have my leader lines available. And let's do the same thing for this one here. So there, we've got my leader lines there. 
So now some more formatting. I probably want to remove these labels here, these indicators here, my horizontal and my vertical indica indicators here. And I just can't delete these because if I press delete, it's going to remove my horizontal line. The same with my vertical line. Control Z to undo that. What I want to do is just make it invisible. So if I have it selected, go under text options, and under text fill, we'll just say no fill. And we'll do the same thing for here. Select my Y axis and select no fill. So I want to move my my axis titles out a little bit because I'm going to put some informational text here. I didn't want that numerical text, but I just wanted some informational text here. So I'll just go to insert, go to text, and text box, and draw it out a little bit. So we're going to draw out a text box. And this is where I can put my low, medium, and high. So I'll type in low, press tab, medium, press tab, and then high. And this one's a little bit fine-tuning because if I press tab, go to medium, press tab a couple times, I want to be, have that medium in the middle, but it doesn't really show up in the middle too much. This is kind of offset a little bit. So I'll press delete, and I'll just have to press space a couple times to bring it in to where it would be right in the middle. And that looks okay. I might need to do the same thing for the high here, so press tab, press tab, and that was a little bit too much. Press backspace and press my space to bring that in a little bit more. I can bring it out a little bit more. And that was too much. Backspace one more time. So that works for there. I have to do the same thing for my Y axis now. So I'll go to insert and text. And I have a text box. And I'll draw one out. Make it a little bit, make it tall but thin. And I'll type in low. And what you don't notice when I typed in low is the orientation's off. I can change that. I'll just select here for my text box and change the text duration. And that's going to be rotate all text 270. So that's going to do the same thing there. Do the same thing I did below with my x axis, tab, medium, tab, high. And you'll notice here, I have to do the same thing. Maybe I'll type a couple spaces. And let's see if I can get away with a tab for the high. Press tab once. Didn't work. Backspace. Press my space bar to push it out a little bit over there. And that seemed to have worked. Now I can move this in a little bit closer. Control Z to undo that. Let's move this in a little bit closer. And do this maybe same, maybe do the same thing for this one. Move it a little bit closer here. Right? And now we're getting into the color. How do I add color to this plot area? I've selected it. All I need to do is in the paint bucket, go to fill, go to gradient fill. And it defaults to this blue color, but we can change that. And having these four stops is just fine. I, I need four anyways. For step one, I need to make that green. So the color here, I'll make that green. For the two middle colors, two middle stops, let's bring this in a little bit so I can select it. Make this one yellow. Make the third one yellow. And make the last stop red. And it doesn't look right because I just need to change the direction. So under direction, we want to have from green at the bottom here, bottom left, all the way to red at the top right. Select this one. And now I've got it. So it's just fine tuning here. And the fine tune that maybe I want to move this one over here. Maybe the yellow would be in the middle. And it's going to be right around there, right? Let's move this over here, all right? And that looks just about right. So the nice thing about having the labels here is I can change this. Let's say this is risk nine, right? Risk nine, oh, what's a big risk? A uh, big risk is drinking, so we put drinking, right? And so it shows up here. So there's the way that we created a risk assessment chart. So now here's the bonus part. Let's say that we want to put this chart onto a PowerPoint. Control C to copy. If all we want to do is just have this as a static picture, all we need to do is just can do Control V. So it looks like by default, when you do a copy and paste, it enters it as a linked image. So you can see what we have drinking here, right? If I go back to Excel and let's say, uh, I changed that back. I, I, it's not drinking. Uh, this is uh, drugs, right? Drugs. That's risky behavior. And you see that change there. Ta uh, Alt-Tab to go back into PowerPoint. You can see it changed here too. So basically, 
by default, it's pasted it as a linked image. And so when you've done the paste here, it's pasted it as a linked image, right? So basically, if you sent this to somebody, let me get out of this. If you sent this to somebody and they didn't have the file, it would be broken. So whatever you updated wouldn't work. Now, if you wanted to send it to somebody and also have the file embedded in there, let me go to this other slide here. You go to paste and they can actually have that in that, that file in there. You might want to use the embed workbook. So I'm going to just use the keep source formatting and embed workbook. And so what happens here, close this one. So now I can edit this file in PowerPoint. So I'm going to just select there, right click and go under edit data, edit, edit data. And for risk three, let's change that risk three. Let's change that. That's what we'll, we'll say doing nothing. Doing nothing is least risky. Press enter. You can see it changes here. Let me close this. If I go back to my X file, Excel file, nothing changes. Alt tab. There is nothing changing in this X file, this, this file here. So it's kind of separate now. So that's what we do if we want to paste it and embed it. Now, the third option, what we can do, I'm going to go to paste, is just paste it as an image. So I can just click on this, paste it as a picture, nothing happens. If I try to type, right click, I want to edit the, uh, the data, I can't do that because it's basically an image. But the nicer thing about the image is that you have these other formatting capabilities. If I want to make it look pretty, or I want to make it float out like that, pasting it as an image gives you those capabilities of formatting that picture. So there you go. So that's how you can create a risk assessment chart in Excel, and then the different ways that you can embed it or paste it into your PowerPoint presentation. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thank you.